All right, all right. Tablet, working. This should be firing up. Now, I want to say this month's challenge was carving something, but I don't remember if that was true or not. But we can kind of do something like that. So what I'm going to do, and it's also May the 4th, so let's carve something May the 4th-y. Um, I think I'm going to start out doing something like this. Let's go into images here. Maybe just as a, just kind of a little warm up here. Oh, we are, oh, look at that. We already got some May the 4th carving stuff to do. So let's go ahead and make a pencil real quick. How many sizes does a pencil have? Let's think about that. So we got a cylinder here. Go into edit mode. Don't make it a poly mesh 3D just yet because I want to knock down these axes. Hey, everybody. How's it going? Um, trying to figure out how many sides a pencil has right now. Uh, you know what? That's what Google's for. How many sides? I remember studying that in school. Six. All right. So let's go down here to H divides. Let's type in six. And uh, V divides. We'll go ahead and knock that down. So we got the start of a pencil. We'll go ahead and say make polymesh 3D. And now we can stretch this out into a pencil shape. Um, I'm not going to do the whole pencil necessarily. Oh, you know what? We can. We're going to do a pencil carving to start out with, but let me see. Number two. It's number two pencil, something I haven't used since I was a wee lad. But I'm just kind of looking at the other end of a pencil. So there we go. We've got a pencil going. And uh, let's take this middle point right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Zoom Modeler Brush, BZM, hover over a point, and we're going to say Transpose Point, and just go, there we go. So now we've got a pencil-ish. Now, this six-sided thing is going to go into a cylinder, and that cylinder is going to be a little bit more fancy. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go into Subtool here, and we'll just go ahead and append. Do I want to get super fancy with that? I think this will work just fine. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and append a cylinder 3D, and this one's just going to have the default uh, cylinders. We don't need all of these lines in there just yet. We can go down here to Geometry, Edge Loop, and just say Delete Loops. And then we'll move this one down, and uh, yeah, we'll have those overlapping just a little bit. Uh, sure, shout them out, Lee. Uh, struggling with some personal character project. I have some questions for you later. I, you know, if I can... If I can answer them while I'm struggling to make a pencil, I'm more than happy to do that. Uh, you know what else might actually help too? If I want to match, oh, perfect. If I want to match something, so I'm going to go ahead and say save image as, throw it onto my desktop here. I'm going to go in here to texture import. I'm going to bring in some reference real quick. Uh, a lot of different ways to do that in ZBrush, but my favorite is just literally throwing it in here. So I'm going to um, bring this in here. And if I want to rotate this, I can always, you know, rotate it. So the pencil head's going up, and then I can go in here and say add to spotlight, the little plus minus sign. And now I've got a perfect little baby um, pencil right there. So I'm going to go ahead and knock this down. So we'll go ahead and scale it down a little bit, drop that opacity down, go ahead and hit Z. And now I've got a representation of how this thing should look. So that way I don't have to eyeball something and be like, well, how long does the metal piece need to be? I already know how long it needs to be because it's right there. And then on top of this, we're going to have an eraser. Um, this eraser, I might actually do a simpler um, cylinder than this. This cylinder, I put in a bunch of spans because I want to do those kind of ridges along the side. But what I'm going to do here now is go in here. I got my custom cylinder thing. I'm just going to grab cylinders, maybe a cylinder 12, and then just knock this one in. Then we're going to do a quick uh, split mass points there. That's under your split menu. So that way, when I want to go in here and do an eraser that has like a little bent, uh, you know, a little fall off on here, we can say, you know, put in a nice fall off. In fact, we can even go back in here with ZModeler Brush, insert multiple edge loops, interactive elevation, and just pull. There we go. And uh, to keep this one nice and tidy up here, we can, a couple different ways we can do that. We can go over here to crease, and we can say, just run a crease tolerance on there. That'll leave these alone and increase this one. So now when I hit D for dynamic subdivisions, which is right up here, um, it'll go ahead and dynamically subdivide that. Let's go ahead and crank up that maybe to three. 
and uh, that should be fine. Uh, I don't need to worry about this because it's going to be buried inside the metal part. So we've got an eraser of sorts. Uh, if we want to tighten up this transition, you can see it kind of starts fading in there quick. Uh, you can literally go in here and just say, you know what, insert single edge loop. We'll go ahead and put a control loop on the top here and then another control loop here so we can control that fall off a little bit more. Good enough. And then right here in the middle metal part, let's go ahead and hit Shift Z. Now I didn't store a camera position here, um, but that's okay. We can just move this right back into place. I'm gonna go ahead and say, you know what, this point, let's Alt tap the pencil here so I can grab that point and go pull that up. And Alt tap the metal part here. Okay, we're good. So I'm gonna go in here to Movie Timeline Show click in there and then same thing movie timeline show turn that off so now when I want to move this back just forward and back arrow and I'm snapping right back hey Morpheus have RAM <laughs> uh, yeah oh man watching my videos non-stop for two months you already got to be real tired of my voice hey John you <laughs> yeah we'll start with a number two pencil you know what we'll even do the text maybe I don't know feeling sassy this morning um, but you know what? This this challenge might actually knock me down a peg. We'll see how it goes. So now I'm going to go through here and I'm going to add some of these spans that we were talking about. So I'm going to turn on polyframe so I can see what I'm doing. Let's hit Control W. Trying to get something that's a little a little brighter there. So now I'm going to go in here and I'm going to say Insert Multiple Edge Loops, and we're just going to pull through a little bit and divide up these different sections. I mean, I guess we could do that. You know what we're gonna have to do? I need to see this a little bit better. There we go. So disregard my original here. So let's go ahead and make this about right. This pencil eraser's a little bit long. Okay, here we go. And then back here into the movie timeline show, we'll go ahead and drag this one off and then pop a new one back in there so that we can now snap to this. So now I'm going to go in here, insert instead of multiple edge loops, let's just do single. And I'm literally just going to go through here and be like, and again, you don't have to be that fancy with this. You can go through here and you can just sculpt it, which I may end up doing in just a minute. But I'm going to block off these ridges here because I'm may i going to have to go through and inset all of these and then pull them out. And then for these ridges, I'm going to go through here and I think I'm going to start with a center here, here, here and here, and same thing for this one. Here. All right, got everything I need. And then again, through these ones, let's go ahead and just do a poly group, poly loop, tap Alt to go ahead and mark these ones. And I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna say inset, poly group all, each poly, and we'll just go ahead and do legacy. I don't need anything fancy there. We'll go ahead and scale these out. So now, um, when we, you when you make an when you go in here and you make a cylinder based on the defaults here, you're going to see the h divide is 32. So if I want to use a radial symmetry on this one, I need to go in here to transform, activate symmetry, and by default, symmetry is going to be just in the x axis. But if we turn on the floor, you're going to see the y axis, the green one that goes straight up from the floor, is the axis we need to be in with radial symmetry at. 32. So now we're in radial symmetry through here. So at this point, I can literally go in here. Um, you know what? Let's just do a transpose polygroup ball, and that'll mask off everything and put a transpose line there. So now we can go through here and we can um, kind of scale if I could. <laughs> I think this is going to be the challenging part. Um, going through here and trying to grab. There it is. Okay, and let's also turn on L sim for local symmetry here. So now we can scale along this individual axis for this kind of thing here. If we pull these out, that'll maybe kind of give us those ridges we were looking for. Another a little bit extreme. I'll go ahead and use our arrows to snap this back. I don't know if that's going to be super successful. I may actually end up doing that as a separate piece, but we'll see how that works. So uh, for the rest of these, I'm going to go ahead and turn off X symmetry. And for this one, we're going to go ahead and say bevel as loop complete. I'm going to pull this out along 
unmask, sorry. Pull this out along here. And now I'm just going to tap through here. So that's going to leave those corners alone. And then we'll go through here and we'll say insert multiple edge loops, zero elevation, keep polygroup. So now I can just go through here and just put a line right through the middle of all these. Boy, it's a lot of work to make a pencil. So now I want to go through here. You know what? I want to scale all of these, but I want to scale them at the exact same amount. So let's see if we can do that. Let's go in here to transpose. Nah, let's go in here to mask edge loop complete. I'm going to go ahead and grab. So this is be the same thing as like an edge loop selection in any other program. We're going to mask these edge loops. Control tap. Arrgh. Control tap to uh, invert that. And then we go in here. I'm going to go to unmatch my center and see if we can't. So if I scale this way, we can scale in that direction, but we're not scaling in that direction. Same thing, but if I hold down Alt and scale in the Y direction, it'll just pop everything out of the same amount. So now we can put those outs here. So now, whew, let's hit D for dynamic. And now I'll go ahead and start smoothing this thing out. Does it look vaguely correct? A little bit. Uh, I need to put in a few control curves in here though. So like we did before, I'm gonna hover go over this. Well, we can crease as well. Um, let's do that manually. Shift D, which is turning off dynamic. Go in here, say crease, edge loop complete, here and here. So that'll keep these a little bit tighter up top. And it looks, I mean, these things are pretty sharp as far as like, you know, I don't need a beautiful edge fall off on that metal, but kind of like to have that. So what I like to do is I'll do a crease level. I'm just doing my custom menu. Crease level of two, smooth subdiv of three. Maybe crease level of three, smooth subdiv of four. And then if I need to do that, I can go through here. If I need to do, um, you know, get rid of any scalloping, I can just insert a control loop there. But um, I think that's actually okay-ish. Okay, so that's what we got. Looking there. I think that's close. Let's back that off a little bit. Let's go ahead and scale this. And on this one, I'm going to go to Unmash my Center, and we're going to scale this down just a tiny bit. Just trying to get this to match up. We got metal, and then we got our eraser again. Unmash my Center. There we go. Something like that. Close enough. Okay. Um, so, question for side effects. You make hair cards now with the new uh, Curse Snap brushes. I haven't made anything since the new ZBrush came out. This is um, that's the first thing I've made. But, uh, yeah, absolutely. Sure. I could. Seems like it. Seems like it'd be okay. Uh, oh, and if you guys are wondering what that's all about... Um, did I put it in here? Zebra's 2021.6. What's new? I can link you to this one. Well, you know, here's here's the what's new for everything. So anything new in ZBrush you want to check out, you can jump in here. And then here's the Zebra's 2021.6. So you can go through here. You can pop it over into YouTube. And then right here on the side, scroll all the way to the bottom. Here's 2121.6.3 and 4 right here. And then this one here is the curved flat brushes. So this one allows you it's basically the curved strap brush but it allows you to actually just do a single-sided flat and they should um i thought i saw a comment that was like it didn't weld but um it should oops so if we go in here to brush curve uh flat you know you've got this capability now let's go ahead and do shift d so you can see it um just you know single-sided mesh just a plane here and you can treat it just like any other curve that you're using and uh, if you were to tap off to delete that and then say split mass points, um, if I hold down shift and smooth, actually, uh, I think about it, smooth brush modifiers min connected to one, um, it should, should weld all these. If it ever doesn't for some reason, you can always go in here to geometry modify topology and just do weld points. And that'll weld all the points that are close to each other. So go ahead and delete that out of there. So now uh, we got this all set up. So now, I go back to my original Google search, and here we go. So we can do 
uh, a little carving on the top of this graphite here, but that's gonna be a different material. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn this into three different layers so that we have wood, graphite, and paint. I think that'll work. So we'll go back to our trusty um, side view here. I'm gonna say duplicate this pencil off, go in here with my Z model brush, insert single edge loop, and right around here is where I'll start that lead uh, happening. So we'll go ahead and go into solo mode on this duplicate and then take this top off and then say delete hidden. For the bottom, I'm just gonna say uh, close holes, mirror and weld across the x-axis. There's no poke face in here, is there? I don't think so. Let's also figure out where my axes are. So Z forward here. We have uh, X symmetry turned on. And now I can go through here and I can say, you know what, we can do this. We can do slide to the middle here. And then we can say spin edge. There we go spin edge and now we can slide this into the middle so okay so we've got this and I think that'll be fine we're gonna end up dynameshing that I believe and now uh, for this one this is gonna be the wood the wood I think I'm just gonna end up maybe dynameshing and sculpting as well and then the paint will be something similar so let's go ahead and do this. Um, as that paint transitions to the wood, it kind of starts to do this, like a bevel kind of comes in just a little bit. So this is my wood. Let's go ahead and name it so we know what we're looking at. And then the paint on top of here is just going to be a duplicate of that. So I'm going to duplicate this off. And we're going to give this a very thin layer. Um, and I might just inflate it and sculpt it in. Let's see. Let's go into solo mode here. I'm going to hold down Alt. This is one of those problem solving things where I'm like, hmm, I don't know if I have a real good attack plan for, let's say, a Geometry Modified Topology Delete Hidden, a real good attack plan for this one. Um, also, these have a little bit of a softer fall off than what I have there. So, what I'm going to do is, how do I want to do like the raised? I don't want to overcomplicate this geo. And this is six sided. So let's do this. Let's go in here to transform, activate symmetry in the Y, radio count of six. So now we have this. We can go through here every single one of these and we just do a quick bevel. And that'll allow us also to say maybe, let's go ahead and say delete a single poly here. And then we can take these ones and just kind of move them in. It might even be safer to say Z modeler slide by brush radius and we'll just slide right along there. Close enough maybe. And that can be our oops. Kind of our outside pencil here. And then if we want to put, you know, let's try this. Let's try insert uh, multiple edge loops. We'll put one again right down the middle of this edge. And then I'm going to say transpose edge. And again, we're working in radial symmetry. So it's going to do it on all sides. And we're going to just pull that out just a little bit here. So now I can see what this will look like. If we go down here to dynamic, we can turn this on. Smooth subdiv will go ahead and leave up. I'm going to turn up the thickness. Eh, you know what? Smooth subdiv down. I'm going to turn up, turn up a little bit of thickness on here and see if that will be like that painted fall off there. I think that'll work okay. Hmm. Okay. And if that's looking okay, uh, we can go through here and we can say, you know what, let's go ahead and apply that dynamic thickness. And again, we're still working in radial symmetry. So I'm just going to my move brush here and we can kind of just move this around a little bit. Could make this look a little bit more irregular. But I don't want to move those bevels around. Okay, so now let's go through here. Let's just run a crease tolerance at 45. That'll go ahead and crease these angles in here. And now if I hit D for dynamic, we'll turn off thickness here, turn up smooth subdiv. And now we can go through here and say, you know what? No, this should be fine. If I'm going to be sculpting on this, 
I suppose that'll be all right. So we've kind of got that. Now on the pencil wood here, uh, let's go ahead and say, do I want to crease this? Yeah, I think I do. We're going to crease tolerance. We'll do a crease level of one smooth subdiv of three. And I'm going to put some control loops in here, insert single edge loop. So we'll control loop this one and maybe even control loop this one. Let's see if that needs it. Yeah, it does. Here, here, and here. Good enough. And then you know what? Smooth subdiv of four. Eh, crease level of two. We'll go ahead and build in a little bit of that hex there a little bit more. And then for this graphite, this one's just going to be, we're going to just start sculpting on this one. So we'll just run a crease, turn on dynamic. Oops. And this crease should actually be, let's uh, uncrease all, let's draw, but increase that crease tolerance. So it just creases the bottom here. And now we've got a round cylinder. Okay. That was a bit, that was a bit hairy than I thought it was going to be. So again, this one, crease level three, smooth so div of four. Number two pencil ish. Let's go ahead and. Okay, that looks about right. Whew. Um, let's see. My character is near finalized with surface noise applied for textures, clothing, accessories. 40 million polys. When I T pose master, I can't pose without ruining the mesh. Did I pose too late? Um, no, as long as you have uh, subdivision history. If you have like a 40 million polygon character with no subdivision history, and then you try to go pose 40 million polygons, um, it's a lot easier to go through and do like a, you know, bend an arm with like, okay, I bend an arm with clothing on it and everything's attached to his wrist and stuff. But if it's just a 40 million polygon dynamesh of all those pieces and you bend an arm, it's, you're just gonna have to do a lot of cleanup. You're gonna have to clean up 40 million polygons as opposed to dropping out of sub D level two, cleaning up 20,000 polygons, and then subdividing back up to put your detail back in. Um, but that would be, yeah, it shouldn't be ruined. It would just be in a worst case scenario. If you do need subdivisions, you can see remesh and then project your details back. <laughs> um, give it time. You, you, my voice will become grating. I promise. Uh, can you tell how to merge similar subtools without disturbing UVs? Um, yeah, you should be able to, oh. yeah, basically when you go in here to subtool and you merge, just make sure you have that UV option turned on, then it should work. Uh, have you checked UV4's metahumans? What are your thoughts? It's great. Ship it. Whenever I'm able to say, hey, you know what? I can pull some sliders around and it's done. Uh, all in. I write myself right out of a job. <laughs> The metal pencils, but usually the metal part is slightly smaller than the wood in the razor because it's crushing them slightly as opposed to being bigger. Yeah, let me see. It is, it's like it's slightly bigger here, but then this is like pinched in. So what we can do, good call. So here's what we're going to do. The wood on this one, we're actually going to say, you know what? You are up here and that's where the metal is going to be kind of bigger. And then right in the middle here, we're going to pinch this. Easy way to do that is to hit W and go to Unmash Mesh Center again. And we're going to go in here to our, that'd be a good one. We can do a taper, but I want a little bit more control of that. So I'm going to go in here to my deformer because I want to lock the start and the end. And then in this resolution, we want to kind of bump up a little bit. So these ones we're going to leave alone. We're going to hold down Control Alt and just grab these middle points here. And then again, um, you can scale out this way, you can scale out this way, or, you can, or vice versa, you can scale it inwards, but we're gonna hold down Alt and scale these in all at the same time. So we can kind of just pinch uh, that in just a little bit here. So that way it kind of goes through and kind of pinches in. Um, another thing we can do if that's just not quite there, if we want a little bit more control two we can go through here we can do a transform activate symmetry in the y radio count 32 is still probably fine and just literally just use our move brush to kind of it's not super accurate but you know what i'm a character artist not a pencil artist so 
deal with it. All right, so there we go. It kind of looks like it's kind of cranked in there a little bit as opposed to like being big and blobby on the outside. Thank you. Um, that looks a lot better. I appreciate that. Um, hey, how's it going? Loser Snake. Uh, Night Shift. I'm, I'm, that's his name. I'm not calling him that. Um, hey, Michael, do you have any thoughts on how to make cinematic quality characters or any websites to look at or tutorials? Oh, God, there's got to be so many. Right? I will say um, cinematic characters. Um, <laughs> speaking of, um, we, have a, we have a guy at Certain Affinity where I work who does the most insano UE4 uh, I'll go ahead and link you to his website or his uh, art station here. Um, like, oh my God, if you see this stuff and these things don't really do it justice. I'm trying to see if there's a, I guess there's a video in here somewhere, maybe at the top where basically it's like when you're in Unreal and you're going through here and it's like, this is in UE4, you know, and it's got the hair and it's got the eyes and, you know, the little goopy eye and stuff like that. So, you know, He's real good at that. So, uh, you know what? Maybe one day I'll be as good as him. That's uh, Austin Martin. But uh, yeah, cinematic characters. He's got it. I, not so much. But luckily, he can do all the cinematic characters we need. And he can teach me how to do it, maybe. <laughs> cool. I'm doing good, Alex. So we're just making a pencil. Uh, and we have our, this part here. So we're gonna go through here. I'm gonna go ahead and say D for dynamic and kind of smooth that out. That's looking okay. This isn't looking great, but we can fix that. And then same thing for the wood. We're gonna go through here and kind of hammer that out a little bit. And then same thing. You know what? Do I want a dynamesh or do I want to actually just have well-distributed geometry? For this one, I think, let's go ahead and distribute this geometry a little bit better. So I'm gonna go in here to insert multiple edge loops keep poly groups and we're just going to go through here and go bring and just kind of dial in some edge loops in either direction so that way we just get some nice even quads to sculpt on uh, however we are going to have to say uncrease all and then just do a re just recrease this stuff so now when i hit d for dynamic as a result we'll get we just start sculpting on that result uh crease level of two smooth set of three maybe that'll work and then as far as the wood goes, this one I'm going to hit D for dynamic just to get that smooth look. And then I'm going to go down here to apply. And then we're just going to go right in here and just hit dynamesh. No, we don't. Rarely do I ever want to freeze um, my resolution on there. Now, since we're not going to see a whole bunch of this underneath, we can literally go through here. Let's do a trim curve and just trim that right up. That's basically going to slice, close holes, and then fill that hole. Redynamesh, and there we go. So now we do have some pencil lead, some graphite run underneath here. So if I turn this one on and turn on transparency, that's about how much wiggle room we have to play with. So same thing here. We're gonna go ahead and just say trim this top here. Here's our graphite. Let's say, you know what, we'll go ahead and crease this. Let's say crease all. Crease all, there we go. And then increase level of one, smooth sub of two. So that'll kind of give us this result. Let's smooth sub div of three maybe. And then I can go through here and just go insert single edge loop and we'll put in a control loop down here at the, the bottom. And you know what, maybe one at the top too. So there's our pencil lead. This will be a little bit smaller. Let's turn off X symmetry so we can go through here and just kind of Put that right in there. And then again, we'll kind of wiggle up that wood at the top there. Alrighty, so this one too, we'll go ahead and just immediately say apply and then just Dynamesh. By the way, all this functionality is over here in the geometry menu, but uh, I like to do my own custom menu, a couple different areas to see that. So you guys, y'all may have um, seen this one. This is a new intro to ZBrush series I made it for something else and then forgot about it and then uh, well here it is so you can if you're just getting started on ZBrush you can go here and it's got some good stuff I've also got another series that's similar uh, let me go in here to my playlists there's my intro to uh, ZBrush for ideation first 55 videos or so 
you can check this one out. Uh, but in here, if we do a search for custom, oop, switch windows here, do a search for custom, control F, there we go. Custom startup project, no. There we go, uh, custom interface and menus, video number 45, or on this one here, Saving custom brushes, no. Custom interface, video 42. That'll walk you through how to make your own custom media stuff like that. It's actually surprisingly easy. I don't know why it's surprising, but it's not that difficult to do. Is there a way to, let's see, make sure I didn't miss anything. Um, oh no, well, I mean, I guess the, the plus side would be you can watch these streams, but sorry to hear about that. Shonik. Um, Oh, cool. Yeah, excellent. Yeah, I'm glad I was able to find that. I had uh, I have a lot of stuff on my hard drive. I was able to find his file. Um, cool. Is there a way to put two or more different IMM curves on a bifurcated curves that are... Oof. Okay, hold on. Let me... Let me, let me see what that is. Divide into two branches or forks. Gotcha. So uh, you wanna put two different IMM curves on something that branches generated by Curve Helper. I saw you did it in what's new Zebra 2021 videos. Um, oh yeah, Curve Helper, well we can try it. So if we wanna do wrap something around here. Now I wasn't able to do it all in one fell swoop. I have to do one and then do another one. But if we go in here and we say append a Z sphere, we got our Z sphere here, we're gonna go into transparency mode. So now we can see the Z sphere, so we hit W move it out of the way. We're going to go ahead and scale this down a little bit. And let's say we want to wrap this pencil in something. So we can go through here. It's like, I want to wrap this pencil. And then Q, W, W, Q. Let's move it over here. Q, W. So Q is drawing and then W is moving essentially. So we have this kind of wrapped around. And now if we want this to continue, I need to hold down shift to make these all the same size. So we've got this, right? And then we're going to say Q, and we're going to go off into another section over here. And that split uh, will have a curve attached, but it's going to be, you know, you're going to have one curve that goes through and then another curve. I think that's how it's going to treat it. So if we go in here to transform, no, stroke, you have curves helper down here. So if we go through here and we say uh, pen new, create a curve, oops, um, copy the ZCR chain first and then uh, create a curve on here, and then we'll go ahead and hide our Z-sphere. So now we have a curve wrapping around this object. So I'm gonna go here to BI brush inserts, army curve, sure, hit M, bike chain. And then if we tap to update this one, oh, it does do both. So this one would go down this way. One way to maybe get around that is we have this generated and it's like, okay, I wanna do another section of this with another IMM curve. I seem to remember the other one that I did the demo on, it did keep this one separate and then I had to go through, but it looks like it did both on this one. So if I want to keep this but update it, what I'm gonna do is underneath stroke, you have some curve options in here. Let's see if we can try to do a snapshot of this curve and then like the eye brush insert. Um, this will stay in there. What else we got in here? Bullets, we'll go ahead and tap to update this curve with bullets that affecting it is it is it overriding let's let's do this when we did this can we split that splits this off I'm trying to see let me see the eye brush inserts let's grab something simple so I can see if it's working or not bracelet link okay it is working but then yeah you're getting these twists in here Hmm, not ideal. You can try going through here, and now we can do another snapshot. The snapshot is six, I think. Five. Snapshot is five, so you can just hit five on your keyboard. And then now we have, let's see if it even puts it in separate polygroups here. Let's say delete curve, control shift, control shift. Maybe just be easy to do the bike chain. Okay, so we do have bike chain in there. Oh, and okay, and the split and the fork is separate. So if you're like, you know what, I wanted a bike chain up here and a bracelet down here, that's fine. Just go ahead and say geometry modified topology delete hidden on the bike chain. And then on the bracelet here, we can say get rid of 
these ones here. Oh, I'm gonna keep those ones and then get rid of these ones here. Now, part of the problem that I should have done while I was in there was uh, untwisting this. I don't know if you'll have a really good opportunity to do that at any point. Let's go back to this one and see if we can get our curve back. There we go. So we got this here. So if we wanted to go through and say, um, wait, bi brush insert. Curve and bracelet. I'll take this one. Let's uh, so that's already auto mask. Let's go ahead and say um, split unmask points. Oh, that gets rid of my curve. I was gonna say you could maybe go through here and like hold down Control. And that, that, that allows you to curve, but then you have snap turned on. So maybe turn that off. So now you can kind of go through and untwist by holding down control and untwisting, but boy, that gets messy. Um, it may be easier just to do two separate curves. That seemed like kind of a nightmare. Um, maybe give that a shot. Cool, just got 64 gig of RAM, but can't set ZBrush to handle more than 25 million points. Where can I change this? Um, Preferences, where is that? Um, preferences performance? No, somewhere in here. Anybody out there know? I don't mess with this. I don't sculpt anything more than 4 million points if I can help it. Um, somewhere in here is uh, you can you can set your maybe memory, max scopes polygons. Oh, maximum polygons per mesh. So, uh, da, da, da. millions of polygons is the value of two, two million. So mine's set to 100 million, maybe in here. Um, really? I thought I just, I did a, I did a, um, before I started. All right, all right. Tablet, working. Sounds okay on my machine. That's me literally recording as we as we started. Cool. And actually, yeah, let me see. Testing, testing. I mean, I'm hitting pretty high up here, almost into the red. So, I don't know. Let me see. Maybe check the volume levels on your end. Okay, so we got this pencil. Let's start actually making something on the end of that pencil. So, it's again... It's May the 4th, so let's say, um, what do we got in Star Wars land? We got this, we got that. Um, you know, something really simple we could do is we could go through here. And so here's the thing, it's supposed to be a carving, right? So I'm gonna go through here and I'm gonna start carving something. But in this particular instance, what I may end up doing is just go through here and just um, maybe cheat a little bit. So we're gonna go through and I'm gonna go grab a sphere real quick. Let's just do a quick save. Um, I'm gonna knock this down just a little. So I'm gonna say initialize. We're gonna say h divides of maybe 16 and 16, and then say now we can say make polymesh 3D. <clears throat> and what does a Death Star look like? Perfect. Images. We got this right at me. Oh, crap. I'm just going to say save image as right on my desktop. And one more time, like we did before, texture import the image, select it, add it to spotlight. And this one, this is a feature too, where it doesn't destroy what you're working on. Now you're gonna see the pure black pixels uh, kind of disappear. So I'm gonna go in here to intensity and I'm gonna crank that to the right a little bit so that they're not pure black. So I can see the whole image. And now we can just go through here and determine how big should this little thing be. So there's actually, maybe I'll Boolean that. That might be a little bit easier to say, okay, this one should have a, oh, you know what? Let's try this. Let's. Let's use this to our advantage first. So I'm gonna go through here and I'm gonna say, sl 
slide Azure Loop Complete. I'll go ahead and slide this out, and then I'll give us the profile of that open hole there. However, this is going to be scooped in, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to hold down Alt, and we're going to say delete a single poly. And then if we go through here and we do an insert multiple edge loops interactive elevation, it's going to want to pop ooh, delete hidden. Really? Really? You're not going to do the hole. You're going to do Oh, we don't want to insert multiple edges. We want to close <laughs> convex hole. And now if we do this, it's going to want to kind of bump out a little bit, but we can't bump in. That's where we need to go to display properties. Flip. And now we can pop this in. So how much, how deep does it go? Pretty deep. So we'll take this in and we'll pull it in this way. And then we'll flip it back. So now we've got the little divot on here. And then towards the middle, it seems to flatten out a little bit. So I'm going to say again, slide edge loop complete. Like so, let's slide this one in and then maybe transpose point and move this up just a tad. Okay, and that's all, let's hold uh, control W or control shift tap that polygroup and then control W make that all one polygroup. So now we've got this here and if that's a little bit, let's do this. Let's hold down control and tap this polygroup and then move this up so we can actually make this a little more shallow. Okay, so now the problem is this thing, you know, we've got this, but then we want to put a slice, like a dividing line right below it, and uh, our geometry doesn't really support that. So we could go through and slice here and try to get that to resolve. That might get a little bit ugly. So what I'm going to do instead. What I'm going to do instead is we're going to duplicate this off. We're going to say crease polygroup, crease level, and I'll keep that up. Turn on dynamic and smooth subdiv. And on this one, we're going to say crease level of three, smooth subdiv of four, and then crease PG. So this is our real dust star, and this we're going to use for um, where, how we're going to slice. So on this sliced version, let's go ahead and say, you know what? Let's apply that. Let's hit Control W, make it all one polygroup. Hit Shift Z to bring our thing back and we're going to say Control Shift Slice Geometry, delete lower. And I'm just going to slice right about where that point should be. So we've got a nice clean slice through here. Uh, let's go ahead and Ziri Mesh. I'm just going to simplify this geometry now. We're going to Geometry, Ziri Mesher, Keep groups, smooth groups down to zero. It's already smooth. We, already, we sliced it. Depth of size down to zero. And target polygon count of 5K should be okay. And we'll go ahead and zero mesh this. Oof. There we go. Um, however, control shift. Keep groups. Depth of size down to zero. Zero mesher. It's weird it's not giving me the. Number one, it's not giving me the countdown. There we go. Uh, okay, so now we have a simplified line. If we want to try to push our luck, we can say half and go ahead. And again, I'm, I'm really more, mostly just interested in this bid line right here. So we're going to say polygroup, polyloop. Let's go ahead and make this brighter so you can see it. Here, just tap Alt so we can grab both of these. Geometry Modified Topology, Delete Hidden. And now we can use Booleans to just put something right down along here. Um, maybe best way to do that would be brush extrude profile and I'm just going to steal one of these profiles in here to kind of dig in. So we'll see how this works. So we're going to go ahead and say back in the stroke menu we have we can do our frame our mesh in that polygroup border. Go ahead and tap to update this and now boy that's not the right one. Maybe this one. And also we don't need um, intensity or size on. So I basically just want something to kind of carve out of this mesh. If I turn this to subtractive, go out of solo mode, and then turn on my Booleans, turn off polyframe, you can see what I'm trying to get at here is essentially just a way to kind of use Booleans to kind of... That way I don't have to worry about the geometry. You can just go through here and Boolean that out. Although, it 
does seem to be. Yeah, I guess that'll work. Let me see. It's kind of giving me a little bit of a iffy result there. Uh, nothing we do. So we're going to make this extra small. And let's turn on polyframe. If it's like twisting around or something like that. You know what else we could do that'd be a little bit more controllable, a little bit easier? Let's do this. I'm just going to manually, let's go ahead and delete that curve function on here. So let's do this. Let's say bevel edge loop complete. I just want nice even lines here. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of these. Say delete hidden. And then now we can say Q mesh polygroup all. We're going to pull out a little bit and then go ahead and pull in. But when we pull in, we want to say maybe insert multiple edge loops. We'll put one right down the middle and then run a quick bevel here. And then we'll say Q mesh polygroup all hold down shift. And this will allow us to kind of punch that in. Let's go ahead and do a crease PG. Crease level of three. Let's move so divo four. There we go. So now we can go through here and let's, you know, let's reset this pivot. So this pivot, I want to be, you know, right in the middle of my object and follow the direction of my object. So I'm going to hold down Alt and tap on that surface normal, then go to unmesh mesh center. So now when I go through here, turn this back on, I should be able to scale it. Let's do Shift D. Kind of wants to wobble though. That's not great. Let me set mesh mesh center W Alt here. You know what? When I sliced it, I wonder if I didn't do it. Eh, that's fine. Anyway, there's a Death Star. So now uh, I want to go ahead and put this on the edge of my pencil here. And if I want to make this come in a little bit more, make it more pronounced, I would just have to go through here and kind of use Q mesh to kind of draw this in. But I think it'll work okay. So now this end result, quote unquote, we're going to say, let's go down here to Boolean, dynamic subdivision, make Boolean mesh. Here's our Boolean U mesh outside of here. So we'll go back to our pencil. We'll go ahead and say append our U mesh. Take this one. Again, I'm not carving just yet, but we'll get to that maybe. And then now we have our little pencil carving, unmesh mesh center on this thing. So like it's like, eh, I mean, I guess it's not super tilted. There we go. Now there may have absolutely been a better way to go about that, but you know what? You get what you paid for. I haven't got my check in the mail yet, so. Uh, let's see. Oh, now I'm way behind. Uh, if I miss anything, I apologize. It's the usual spiel I'm going to give you. Cool. Excellent. Uh, about the creative custom, yeah, I'm feeling about to end up putting a whole bunch of things I'm not really going to use. I want to see what Michael chose to put his UI since he's been ZBrush so long. He's been able to rework his UI many times. And again, this is kind of my workflow. And this maybe might even be hampering my workflow because it's like, well, this is how I do things. So, you know, if I don't put anything new in here, I may be disinclined to use it. So uh, what you can do is put in too much stuff and then use it and then reevaluate every week or every month and be like, yeah do I really use this? And then if you don't, all it is is just, uh, preferences, config, enable, customize, and then uh, you're good to go. You just pop those things out you're not using or think about like, oh, you know, or, or while you're working, maybe keep a little tabs of, you know what, I'm constantly over here using this. And then just write that down and you can put it in there sometime. Cool. Um, Excellent. And again, uh, I apologize. I think it looks like I missed a bunch of stuff here. Cool. Sorry about your crash. Yeah, I, I, I agree with uh, a Crackle and uh, Rizuan. Just put in there what you, what you end up using and you're good to go. Yeah, so also, yeah, that's another good one. So uh, mirror, deformation mirror, and then geometry modified topology mirror and weld, putting those together has helped me a bunch. And then also down here in dynamic smooth crease level and then smooth subdiv next to each other as opposed to far apart. 
because like things I use next to each other are used a lot together, putting them next to each other in the interface. Um, show how you can model a Warhammer 40k Space Marine helmet. Almost exactly like this. Those things are not complicated. So, so essentially, and probably if I'm going to do it, if I'm going to do something really quick, hold on. I have it defaults to like buying it at the top. And I just like, no, I just want images. This type of look. So a lot of super simple shapes that you can Boolean in. And then probably even this is simple enough to where you could probably zero mesh the end result and have it work pretty well. Um, I think. Again, yeah, these are these are a bunch of simple shapes. So it'd essentially be like, yeah, make your make your simple primitives, stick them together, and then use booleans um, to go through. I mean, you here's another option: you could go through and you could sculpt it fairly quickly, and then just retopologize the pieces you need. So if you get stuck in a spot where it's like, oh, this boolean shape is weird, just dynamesh it, sculpt it, rebuild it. Um, yeah, I stream every week, month, at the same time, when it's, uh, first Tuesday of the month on this channel, first Thursday of the month on my channel. I'm going to try to stream more, but I've been saying that for the last five years, and I've never done it, so don't hold your breath on that. Uh, maybe someday. Any way to make IMMs retain UVs from their source mesh? Just trying to set hair cards up like this. It's a rain nano mesh. Notice they lost all UVs from the source mesh. Um, IMM brushes. I do curve brushes, I'm not sure. I remember Druss did, like, how can I make my IMM brushes retain my UVs? And that's a pretty easy process. Uh, curve brushes. That's on subtool, no. Insert mesh brush that contains UV coordinates, no. Um, crap. Curve brushes, I'm not sure. Um, anybody watching that wants to know about the IMM brushes that maintain UVs. I mean, when it comes to, if it's just a strip of cards, hair cards, um, I would imagine, I mean, it's been a while since I've had to do it, but like, if you put your hair cards in there and then you say, okay, go ahead and unitize my UVs, some, by now some UV program should be smart enough to go, oh, you know, this is longer than it is wide. Let me rotate them all in the same, and then you can go root to tip. To pick which one is top and bottom. I mean, Geo to Maya hair is how I was doing that, but that's boy, has been a long time. Wish I had, wish I had a better uh, answer on that one, but I don't know that I do. Because yeah, an IMM, even an IMM strip card is not going to maintain UVs because you're adding new geometry, so it doesn't know what the UVs are going to be at any point. But as far as like, oh, an IMM that duplicates an object over and over again. I mean, in Maya, you can, or any program, you can go through and you can do like, hey, here's my source object with the UVs I want, and then shift select and go bloop, transfer those UV coordinates to these objects. Sometimes it works. Production, not even once. Be a concept artist. Yes, oh yeah, the exhaust port. <laughs> where did they fly to get that? I gotta, I gotta go dig in those trenches. Now, supposedly this is a very small carving, so we're gonna go lean into, you know what, I just couldn't do all that detail. Um, but a real one, you would go through and you would do like nano meshes and stuff so you can populate this thing with a bunch of cool stuff. Um, quick Star Wars fighter of your choice. Yeah, we can throw one on top. Uh, cool, thank you, Pigumon. Tray part curve, that's great. Um, basic IMM one. Yeah, I'm not sure. I, w I Yeah, I wish I had a better answer for you. Cool. Alrighty, so let's finish this thing off. Uh, we've got it, this is basically the block out, and now we gotta do the real thing. So this wood up here is a little bit gross, so we're gonna go through here, and we're gonna say we're gonna turn off X symmetry. Uh, we've already, let's go ahead and hit apply, so this is all real geometry, and really quickly we're just gonna go through here. These are smooth, and you know, it's real geometry now, so we can go through here with our trim dynamic, and we can just kind of make it look like these edges have been worn in irregular ways and stuff like that. Let's also change this back to my startup material so I can see what I'm doing. Um, something like this. 
we're gonna break up these regular shapes. And again, we're just using trim dynamic. So you could get fancy if you wanted to and like do this with poly modeling. Uh, but man, a ZBrush, we did enough poly modeling. Now it's time to actually have fun. So here we go. And if we want to just push these through, we can also just hold down, like go to our um, standard brush and just kind of push in. Give you my reference back. Just kind of go through and just kind of push these in. And let's also go through here and maybe use our move brush. And again, we're just going to break up these regularities just a bit. They're a little bit different. And then trim dynamic again. Trim dynamic brush. So now we've got this. Let's talk about the wood um, just above here. This one uh, has been dynameshed. So we can go through here. I'm going to again, I think you can try trim dynamic. Let's go ahead and throw on a, a square alpha so we get a nice, a um, little bit more of a nice line there. We're going to go through here like it went through a sharpener. And it's got the different planes that kind of go in a kind of in a slight circular pattern here. And then up towards the top, we're going to do the exact same thing. And we can maybe even if you wanted to go nuts. Um, I don't know why this is going nuts, but underneath the brush here, we have trim smooth border. So this, I, these are the rock, the brushes I use to make rocks. Elemental PQRS trim, smooth border, same deal. Uh, square brush alpha, and then now you can go through here and really kind of kind of gives you like like somebody went through with a um, like an exacto knife. And then we can clean this up, or a uh, God, I'm having a hard time with words this morning. A box cutter or something like that. So you can go through here and you can kind of start carving that up. And then again, same thing on the top here. I want this to look a little bit more irregular. So we'll kind of pull these up and then down. Actually, I'm just going to pull up so we don't show our hand there that this is actually all fake. Here and then one more time with our trim dynamic right up in here. And if you need more resolution, this is actually kind of low res. You can go through here and just crank up that resolution. Oh, on your Dynamesh, which I had turned off. So again, just really minimizing that transition between the wood. It should be really close to the graphite there. And then we'll go back in here with our trim smooth border. BTS, um, nope, brush trims BTT now. Oh boy, that's gonna take me a while. And now we can go through there and we can we can just kind of make it look like we carve this out. You can maybe go in here to, uh, do we even have a lazy radius on? No. Eh, that's fine. I don't, I don't actually mind the stepping through here. I can always clean it up with my trim smooth brush as needed, but I kind of like the look it gives me. So there's my pencil lead uh, wood. And then again, down through here, if I was, if I was really doing this, uh, actually having these carved pieces meet up with the carved pieces on the paint would actually be a pretty cool thing to do. All right, now, what's next? Uh, we got the metal there. I think that is what it is. And then now we just need to do a little bit of text. So this is going to be number two. Do we want to put that in? Well, let me do it right. It looks like it's embossed just a bit. So let's go ahead and do that. Quick save. And we're going to go into, let's turn off live boolean here. Let's go out of edit mode, switch, hit control N, <clears throat> go to a poly mesh 3D, go into edit mode. Let's go in here to our Z plugin. And we're going to go in here to text 3D. We're going to say new text and we're going to say no dot space two. Yeah, I think that's about right. So good enough. A couple things we could do here. Um, number one, we can go in here, turn off adaptive so that we get nice, even uh, geometry all the way around, which I think I do want. And then I can thin this out manually if we want, but I think it'll be good enough. So I think we're good. Excellent. So let's go through here. I'm going to hit B, 
create insert mesh new. Let's go down here to our pencil. And we wanna, you know what, I can rotate that around. Let's look for a good angle. Good enough. Now this one has uh, dynamic, our subdivisions on it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this, this wood, alt tap the wood one here, and then BI brush insert, oh, B insert mesh. And then we're just going to turn it to the side here. And number two should be, actually it almost touches the top and bottom here. It's actually pretty big. Something like this. This one we don't really need anymore. Let's rotate this around. Can't really change the kerning at this point, but we can manually do that. So if I go in here to polyframe, we're gonna go ahead and say split mass points. Let's go through here and do, uh, I'm gonna do an auto group so we can always get our front and back polygroups back, not a big deal. But I'm gonna say, first of all, W, let's go ahead and move it over here and we can do a little bit of a scale this direction to kind of thin those out. And then if I need to move something, um, oops, let's turn off Dynamesh. I can, you know what? We just mask, they're, they're, they're far apart enough where we don't need to like use auto masking or anything like that. And I think that is about good enough for government work. So now we have this. So if you ever wanna punch this in, simply move this below this one here so that we can make this subtractive. So now when we turn on my Boolean and we push in number two, we'll get that embossed look. Now, uh, it is a little bit more chewed up than this. This is a very, very nice uh, machined and boss. So we may need to fix that a little bit. So let's go into solo mode here. Switch out our shaded material. And I wanna, again, I wanna chew this up a little bit. One thing we can maybe try is down here under deformation, you can run a noise. Kind of just wobble these lines a little bit. But before we do that, let's go back and get our polygroups back. So I'm gonna go through here Actually, one easy way to do it is just to grab all these back faces here and hit Control M. If you want to move them all at the same time, Control W, sorry. So front, back, and side all have their own same polygroup. So this is basically how we started. Um, if you go through here and you do a, where is it, a bevel, you hold down Control, you can put a bevel in between all of your polygroups here. I don't know if that's what I want to do at this point. Maybe what all I need to do is go down here to crease, run a crease tolerance on here, crease level of one, smooth subdiv, what am I doing over there? Smooth subdiv of two or three. And then now if you run that noise, ah. Um, you know, just a little bit of noise just to kind of ding it up just a little bit. And in fact, if you want to dial that in, we can go down here and we can say, you know what, give me a morph target. So we're gonna store a morph target here. We're gonna run a little bit of noise through this. Again, just kind of wobble it up. And then if any, any areas are a little too much, um, BMO, I got yay, BM, it's not BMO anymore. It is BMG. Remembering all that new new ways stuff now. You can go through here and you can morph out any noise that's not working. Um, or you can skip all that. And you can literally just manually go through here. You know, and do whatever you need to do. Use your move brush or anything like that, or use the pinch brush to kind of go through here and just kind of nudge things a little bit so it's not so perfect. Is that emboss a little too much in there? Boy, that was more involved than I thought it was going to be. Um. Oh yeah, so this is actually, well that's another thing too, where it's like, oh, I guess it is. 
I guess, yeah, this has to go straight up and be within the bounding box of that graphite. So you know what, let's go ahead and let's make this as wide as we can. W, unmesh mesh center. So back here, startup material. do this go in here and let's just do a taper so I can actually really kind of oh, let's also take this exponent out so we can as we're tapering it it's just getting wider like so so if I can go through here and I can say you know what give me a little more leeway here This, let me see, let's find our trim. So technically this should be no larger than the width of lead. fudge it just a bit <laughs> something like this okay so now we have our little pencil here with our little carving and now let's see is there anything else we need to do before we toss this into key shot real quick I think we're okay now the boolean isn't going to show up like that so what we need to do is apply that boolean I like to keep these things handy so I'm going to duplicate this one I don't even need to do that I'm going to make a mesh anyway so I'm going to hide everything except for what I want to Boolean, just to make this easier on myself. This seems to be working okay. So I'm gonna say, give me a dynamic subdivision Boolean mesh so I can append this back. Go ahead and hide these both. Now this is all real geometry. Let's go through here. I don't necessarily want to, let's do shift D. Dynamic off. Let's hit Control D one time here, so I can go through. I'm just going to use Shift Smooth to kind of make this not so razor. color I think I could control elseways. So let's do this. Off. Off. All right. Let's say Z. back. I'm going to get some local color going. So I'm going to say um, BPA is my paintbrush. We're going to have RGB turned on and we're literally just going to alt tap here and just paint this yellow. Alt tap here, paint this whatever color that needs to be. This is going to be metal and this is going to be wood and then graphite. So I think that's all we need. So here, alt tap here, C, alt control F, which is color fill object that's my own hotkey I think and then for the black part let's go ahead and see we have poly groups here so control shift control shift X to expand out or you know what we can just grab both of these I want both of these here and then fill with pretty dark we'll hit C You know what? Let's undo that. Let's do this. Let's do 
I want both of these poly groups, but I want to back it off just a tiny bit. So both of these, and then the control shift S to shrink that back just a bit and then fill. Oh Lord. Control shift S to shrink a little bit, fill. No, these ones are a little bit different. Both of these. I didn't grab all these, sorry. So here's what I want. Don't care about this one anymore. Control Shift S to shrink a little bit. Fill. Close enough. Like I said before, this will be whatever it needs to be. This will be whatever it needs to be. This will be what it needs to be. This one down here, let's go ahead and say apply. So that's real geometry. And then we'll set C to inherit that color and then fill. Something like this. Cool. Now, save as. Get to these comments in just a second. If I missed any streaming carving pencil. Okay. Um, catch back up here. UVs. Hey, neat squid. Thanks for showing up. Star Wars fighter. We'll maybe get two. This is taking longer than I thought it would. Um, Cool, cool. Ah, Death Star, yes, cool. Got that taken care of. Um, yeah, and uh, for Andrew, you can just make your whatever interface you want. Literally, you can change it. So if you don't like the UI layout, then making your own, depending on your workflow, is probably the best way to go. Um, oh yeah, thick skin uh, would be another good option to kind of limit the amount of sculpting just to kind of go through and chew some of that stuff up as well. Cool. Alrighty, so let's take this. Uh, let's go in here to render, external render, key shot, throw that on over, and we'll throw some quick materials on this um, and if you're into if you wanted to take this into like a marmoset 4 or substance painter we can also I can show you this one here you guys might get a kick out of this or you know maybe we can even maybe we'll do this um, this one no UV look dev uh, the no UV look dev uh, series right there is a really really fun one maybe we'll we'll use that as kind of a supplementary here, so we'll go ahead and put this so you all can see it. There we go. So now, uh, first things first, edit preferences, and let's get my usual thing back here. Uh, the second thing I like to do is go in here to environments and just throw on an environment that's not just a studio environment. Let's see if we can get some more poppy lighting here. Let's go in here to our environment. I'm going to turn off that back just to make it but easier to look at. So here's our object here. Now this is looking a little bit dull, so you can go in here to the material graph and you can say uh, over here, upgrade to new node and then turn off apply matte cap because I'm really just looking for the vertex color um, in here. And this can be whatever material you want. So if you wanted to change it from advanced to um, like just plastic or paint, uh, you can do that. And then we'll go in here and we'll crank up that roughness just a bit here and uh, looking better although now that I look at this color we may need to go in here to our utilities and say color adjust and I'm going to pop this color right through here so I can change that hue to be a little more yellow cool all right so we got that there let's go over here to materials and let's say wood is there a very light I don't need anything crazy. I think this will be fine. Is there a graphite? Or is there a graphite in the cloud library? Not that it's a huge deal. It's not the material properties on this aren't nuts, but hmm. 
Hmm. We'll try it. Go ahead and download that. Here and same material here. And then for this one, what is that on the bottom? Maybe aluminum. One thing I didn't know about aluminum was it actually used to be pretty expensive before they found out cheaper ways to make it. I'll say aluminum shiny. And then we'll go over here to the roughness and thaw that in a little bit. And then for this one down here, again, we have vertex color on it. It's just a little bit dull because it's applying that matte cap. So we can upgrade this to the new node here. We can delete that one out of there. And then we'll go ahead and say apply matte cap off. And then now we've got a little rubber here. So in this one, whenever you're doing this, you may need to go in here and like, you know, crank up the specular and play around with that and the overall roughness to kind of dial in the look that you're going for. Um, or you can literally just throw a plastic on there. This one should be pretty, pretty rough, I think. Number two pencil, this maple wood, is that really doing it for me? Let's try something a little more I don't mind the color of it, but it just seems a little plain Jane. Let's go in here to textures and we can, I wonder if we can just modify these all at once. I don't want to have to mess around with a bunch of this stuff. So uh, color to number, so that's the gradient and that's going to go, this color goes directly into the diffuse. So if we can go in here to add a color adjust on this one, Again, I can do it hopefully all in one fell swoop. So if I want to overall change the hue or the saturation or the value. I can do that. All right. So the graphite's getting a little bit lost in there. Let's go back to our environment here and we'll go ahead and crank that up. Or we may have to put a light right on it, but let's play around with this uh, environment a little bit too. So we can go through here and kind of dial in. This is gonna control our reflections, but we can always go in here to edit, add light. Um, let's do an area light. And let's go ahead to our scene and let's drag this area light here. We can say move, and I'm going to help pop out this little pencil light here. So we'll go ahead and scale this up. Now this area light, not real bright. Uh, so let's double click that. We'll go in here to, let's turn on the watts. Maybe We don't have to make that visible to camera either. We can kind of use that to carve that out of the background a little bit. And there you go. You have uh, a pencil with a little graphite. Let's go in here to our environments here. It's a bit much. I was looking for something that This aluminum. It's a little too shiny. Come on, give me. see here what's your general workflow for cleaning up after your boolean uh, i guess multiple geo again i struggle with that to see your mesh works but it's never as crisp as the boolean mesh uh if you can if it's a simple boolean you should be able to do like a zero mesh with keep groups turned on it may or may not work depending on how complex your mesh is um, but you know what this wood also needs to be duller i think that's part of the problem here You know what, I'm gonna kill that there. And we're just gonna go in here to roughness so I can just. Come 
crank that up. Um, anyway, uh, you can also just DynaMesh it, and that'll remesh. Or you can ZeriMesh it at a lower um, poly count, and then you can project your details back. So subdivide, project, subdivide, project. Um, maybe not great, but um let's key shot your render of choice it is when i need to do something super quick and i can hit a button and get in there as opposed to oof that eraser looks a little small let's go ahead and select this and let's go ahead and say move part and let's scale this up just a tad Hmm. I'm trying to see. Part of the problem is there's no marking. There's no real marking lines in there. It's too perfect. Same thing for the pencil lead. I completely forgot about that. So let's go ahead and pause this. Go back in here. And on this one, what I'm going to do. So this one, uh, this is new. So we can go down here to DynaMesh. Where are we at? Geometry, DynaMesh, and then over here, uh, there's an open circle now. So if you just turn off blur and then you DynaMesh this, it's going to DynaMesh at whatever resolution. However, if you do, let's say Control W, if we do open circle and then DynaMesh, it's going to look at the bounding box of this object. In this case, it didn't seem to do that much, but it's there if you need it. I'm going to crank up this resolution quite a bit and then hit DynaMesh here. So now we've got a bunch of polygons in here, and then now I can make it look like this was carved. Same thing with this. So I need to go through here. I need to crank up this resolution a little bit. And then maybe dynamic this result. Go back in here to our trim dynamic or trim smooth border. There we go. If you're ever working in ZBrush and you're like, oh my god, this this dynamesh, let's go through here, let's do a polish by feature, sorry. This dynamesh seems to be really laggy. Um, probably it's because Um, you have dynamic turned on accidentally, like I did. So we're going to go through here, and then again, trim smooth border, and this will allow us to kind of carve this pencil up. Now I'm hoping when we go back into key shot, we don't lose everything we just did. It's not Once you've gone through it once, it's not that difficult to get it back. Um, but still, I'd rather not have to do it again. So here's this, so now this one. This should look a little bit more like it was carved. And then this up here really needs to get warbled a little bit. So like we were talking about, um, we go in here to thick skin and you can say, <clears throat> as you're knocking this down or making it look carved, you can go through here and you can say, turn on thick skin, dial in, just however much you want that surface to be messed up. And then you can go through here as you're kind of going through and saying, okay, trim dynamic. It'll only allow you to trim down so far. Um, also, another maybe smart thing to do would be to turn on morph target for this. So if we do go a little, if we get a little heavy handed, we can always dial back in what we need to. So now, again, BTB, and this is for any brush, you know, trim smooth borders only going to allow us to do so much damage to the underlying mesh here. So. So if I was microscopic and I had, I was doing this with actual tools, you know, I probably wouldn't be super precise or, you know, precise enough, but we're going to give it some chewed up wear markings. And again, we still have thick skin turned on, so it's only allowing us to mess it up so much. And eventually I'm going to turn that off. We still have our morph target stored with our pristine copy and then uh, let's go ahead and turn thick skin off and then now we can go through here and again I'm trying to treat this like I went through and use my carving tools to kind of get this carved first you know knocking in the, the volumes and then 
might have actually behooved me to actually make this line by hand so I didn't have to go through and fight it that much. Let's go ahead and knock off those corners there because that's a little those are a little too sharp especially at this scale. Oh awesome thank you. Coffee delivery just what I needed and then back here. And then for the final render, what I might do is take a picture of a hand and put it behind it. Again, you're selling the scale of the object. Uh, do a little tilt shift or a little bit of depth of field to kind of make it look super tiny. Because if you're going to take a picture of something super tiny, the focal length of the camera, um, if you got it that close, you know, you're doing a macro shot. Like this. And again, if you needed to bring anything back, BM, what is it now? BMG. You can go through here and you can morph it back to its original shape. But I think in this case, I think we're okay. BTB. Oops. It's not BTB anymore. BTT, Trim Smooth Border. Um, again, I'm just going to kind of go through here and give myself some really sharp transitions in here. Trim smooth border to clean it up. And not everything is super blocky or jaggy or anything like that. They've got some actually smooth parts. If you wanted to, you can hold down shift and you can smooth those out. Or go in here to like H polish. And that'll give you, you can even do H polish with the square alpha. I don't think it'll be, it'll still be pretty soft. Let's go in here with H polish and use this to kind of smooth out some of these portions here. Everybody cross your fingers. Send that back over. Uh, Ski Shadow Full Texturing Program, never tried it. Uh, will it spit out normal maps, etc. No, it's like, a, it's like a product render. Um, you can use it in conjunction with stuff that'll do that. You can actually, uh, Drust has a, a thing where you can actually paint a bunch of different material properties and use that, um, but I've never, I've never done that. Let's see, what did we retain here? Materials, we got this. Bada bing, we got this. We need to material graph it up again. No big deal. Oops, upgrade a new node, delete the old one, get rid of this matte cap, and then change this from advanced just to paint and then bump up that roughness a little bit. Maybe not even that much. It seems like it's pretty shiny. Uh, one thing we did need to do is throw in that utility again for our color adjust just so we can go through here and adjust that hue to be a little more yellowy. Is that right? Yeah, just a touch, just a tiny bit. Uh, and I think we're back where we started-ish. Material graph here. Is this right? Advanced material graph. Here, yeah, my cap's not applied. Okay, I just looked a little dull. Okay, so back to where we started. Now, like I was saying before, um, we can do a little bit of, we can do this in post, or we can go in here to camera. Let's go down here to depth of field, and we want to put our focus distance right there on that, and then crank down the f-stop. So this way, you know, we have the, the focus up here. So again, you know, one thing we could also try to do, let's go in here into environment, drop that brightness down quite a bit. We're just gonna use the environment for the reflections and then we can overplay maybe the area of light here. And we can just light our scene like that. But anyway, something like that. Let's see, camera, let's go ahead and put that back on here. done. 
In fact, we can make a new camera. We can go ahead and lock that one off. Let's go back here to environment and let's put that back up to Now I spend more time in here just kind of playing around with environments than anything else probably. And then one other thing too is um, there's not a whole lot of uh, ambient occlusion in this particular one, but when I go through and do my final, I'll add that as part of my render here. So if I'm ready to go ahead and render this out, uh, one thing I can do is go up here to our, let's just hit render. So it's gonna be my real one here. We'll go ahead and make it pretty, eh, we don't need to make it that big. Good enough. And then we'll say whatever, whatever. And then our render passes, I'm gonna add any occlusion in here. Let's go ahead and render that out. And while that is running, I'll get cut up. Alumin, aluminium, aluminum, aluminium. <laughs> How do you guys say it? Ah, uh, cool. Yeah, this is the ZBrush centric version of the uh, ZBrush here, so. Yeah, it doesn't bake or create normals or anything like that. Yay, we're done. So we'll go ahead and check that off here. Cool. Let's go ahead and pause our render. And we'll hop into Photoshop real quick. And yeah, we'll, we'll hop into maybe Marmoset and or Substance. Uh, detailed tubes. Oops. Thanks, Photoshop. And let's go through here also. You know what? Let's hide this so I can see. Okay, something like this. Uh, also, when I'm going to be dragging this stuff in, I'm going to go to my renderings. And at the very top here, you're going to see I have a uh, PSD and an EXR. Uh, for the PSD, it's easy. You just drag it right on in there. For the EXR, I don't need that just yet. I can go through here and uh, drag this in as well. Uh, but I have a 3D IO EXR reader, so I can go through here. And this will be my ooh, very light ambient occlusion. Uh, no big deal. Image mode. 8 bits per channel, don't merge. Copy this right into here so that now I have um, just again a little bit of that AO kind of in there. And then on this AO, then go ahead and do a uh, hue saturation and or a levels. Hold down Alt so those just go to the ambient occlusion. So if I wanted to, I could colorize this to make it, you know, whatever, redder or bluer, as well as the overall levels and stuff like this. So I don't really need to do too much. And if there's anything in here I don't like, I can just add a mask, brush. Let's go in here to our general brushes here. That I want to keep this not so much. All right, so uh, we've got this. You know what? We, we did have, uh, I accidentally closed the window, but let's say, let's throw our curves in here. Hmm. Call it back. Call it back. All right. That's what we're going to do. We're going to say file, save as, throw that right into my render do, 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 streaming, carving, pencil. Okay. Getting caught up again. Um, Biggest pet peeve with nails on chalkboard is erasing with hardly an eraser left. Metal scraping sound. Yes, it makes your teeth tingle. 
that's a good one. <laughs> Not a terrible one, but uh, I agree. Uh, all by Hannah can't help but thinking how fast super detective Mike would have used um, super detailed tubes like skin in a Guyver figure. I do have. Um, I don't know if this is related or not, but I can open up. Hmm, would this be under recording? Gosh, Mechie tube, tubey mech. Twisted guts images. Mech variants, mech refine. I'm trying to remember how many of these things I have. If you're talking about something like this, I did this for a thing at work to kind of just uh, talk about functionality, but uh, doing all these different tubes and stuff like this for the body. Um, yeah, that can be, that can be tricky. You know what I do? I do have this recorded. Let me, um, gosh, let me publish this. I have the I have about eight hours of video on this. I, all I got to do is really just put it up. So um, yeah, I'm trying to remember how I did it. I want to say, I want to just say IMM curve. Like I did have, I had an envelope of a mesh and I would just go through here and drag on uh, bit by bit. And now what you can actually do and make, make it even easier is you have the functionality in ZBrush 2021.6, I think, where they added the, um, you could use a duplicate or whatever you have stored in history where you hold down control and tap your point in history and you can deflate the mesh if you wanted to even. But uh, as you're dragging these out, it'll disregard the other tubes and only pay attention to your underlying mesh. So that would actually make this a lot easier. But anyway, yeah, if you're talking about that, um, I'll, I'll see if I can get that published. Cool. Um, Ryan Tools Easy Mesh. Oh, that's another thing too, under the Z plugin. If you want a lot of, you can use the, it used to be called Dynamesh Master, now it's called Dynamesh Utility. If you want a bunch of control, you can use that too. Uh, watch when you're destroyed. You said you were going to do a Venom with Sculptures Pro and a bunch of gooey spit. Did you ever do that? I need to see it if so. Oh uh, yeah, I can do that real quick. Um, since this went longer than I thought it was. Uh, we can go through here and we can do mm -hmm, intro, sample files, for example, reptile. Anybody watch the new Mortal Kombat? I sure did. I basically, I was basically raised by Mortal Kombat 2. So, uh, oh, wrong one. Delete all. Come on, Mike. This is one we want. I'm going to turn all this off. So, like this gooey spit right here. Um, if you want control, I would maybe use Z spheres to, to get your placement, especially if you're doing very complex placement. But uh, we can recreate that. Um, let's see if we can use Sculptors Pro for that. Let's go ahead and delete this out of our scene here. Moving right along. Is this pencil tutorial going to be somewhere in case I want to rewatch it? Yes, it'll be in two places. It'll be, uh, I'll upload it as soon as we're done here. I'll upload it on my channel. So under playlist, look for the big blue genie here. And this is all the past, past playlists. And then also where we're at now is streaming on the Michael Pavlovich workshop. So I'll go ahead and link you here, all the videos for my scene will be here on Picture Logics, and for me on my full episodes there. Cool, no problem, Crackle. I'm happy to answer what I can. I don't know that I always have the best answer, but yeah, Z-Spheres, I think. Um, the much ornament designs in ZBrush, no, but um, ZBrush free. This version of ZBrush isn't free. However, we did do, uh, in the playlist here. We did use ZBrush Core Mini to create uh, this kind of, what's his name? Bib Fortuna. Um, we did we did him in ZBrush Mini. And then ZBrush Core is a cheaper version of ZBrush. And we did this uh, kind of, this is a really weird one, but we ended up doing using ZBrush Core for kind of sculpting some stuff out. So check those out if you want to use reduced functionality ZBrush or ZBrush Core Mini, which is free. Here, but uh, yeah, I think it was like if I wanted to recreate it how I had it, it would basically just be like a pen, a Z sphere, have the Z sphere, hit E to scale it down, go in here to transparency, and it's a little bit tedious. It's not real uh, super quick, but it does give you enough control so that while 
you're making this bit here, you can get at least control like, okay, I want this one to go, hold the Q and then shift, and then we'll just pull this one apart. So I want this strand to go to this tooth and then I want another strand, let's see, what would make sense? This one here and then we want one maybe, um, let's see, Q here. And you know what, let's make them all the same size. It's gonna look a little bit weird, but when we go in and sculpt, it'll uh, make a little bit more sense. And even in here, you can be like, you know what, this one's gonna kind of hang a little bit from here to here, and then this one's gonna be straighter, maybe. I don't know, it's in the, it's in the process of doing this. Um, and then once you have that, you can hit A for adaptive skin. By default, it's gonna give you a, di um, what is that? Dynamesh, but you can go down here to adaptive skin and say, you know what, Dynamesh resolution of zero, density of one, and then you just have regular geometry. So you can make an adaptive skin. You can go ahead and say insert that skin Z sphere, turn off your Z sphere. So now when you're doing your spit, you can go, you know what? It's gonna be bigger, but smaller in the connected. Ooh, let's turn down, hold down shift and turn down intensity. So it's not quite that crazy. So it'll go bigger to smaller. And then of course, bigger to smaller. And then now you can go use your move brush or whatever and kind of move these like so. And at this point, if you decide, you know what, this is going to be like, you know, you can go through there and do that. Um, again, you can use Sculptors Pro for this. It would be like um, BSH for snake hook, turn on Sculptors Pro, and you can like, you know, just drag out spit strands. But, and even if you wanted to make the end globule bigger, hold down shift to start smoothing and then let go of shift. Oh boy. And that'll kind of inflate it out uh, as you're doing that. And then you can go back in here to like move or move at you and put this where it needs to be. But um, even this one, you know, I may be inclined to just use geometry. Instead of Sculptors Pro, I don't know, it just seems like I, what I don't want to do is end up just fighting the geo, you know? So at this point, maybe I just do zero mesh or half that size down to zero and see if that gives me a little bit more even geo, something a little more controllable or at least predictable, I should say. There we go. So we can go ahead and thin this out and then glob this up at the end. And then when we go through and we do our, let's turn on D for dynamic. Uh, even in here, if you wanted to do a, like a display properties, BPR settings transparent. Oh, shoot. I forgot. We had, um, let's go back in here. Turn off render key shot. So now we have like a little translucent spit thing in ZBrush. Now it's not gonna be there all the time. Uh, just when you hit BPR render, it'll do the BPR transparency. Cool. Uh, Jared says, uh, primitive shape for IMM and sphere, dynamesh, snake hook brush, move and inflate. Yeah, absolutely, that'll work too. So in fact, if you're gonna use maybe just a simple uh, cylinder, maybe start here, and then when you pull out on the cylinder and then pull back in, that'll stretch it out for you. So that'll kind of be just a little bit of a quicker start. So now we've got these two in place. And then and now I don't have a tremendous amount. Let's go ahead and say split mass points here. Um, I don't have a whole lot of geometry on this particular one. You know what else we could do is, okay, let's do this. So two things you can do, sketch shaded. We're gonna go in here and okay, we just use an insert cylinder, insert multiple edge loops, not interactive elevation. Oh, interactive elevation. Thin it out while you're doing it. Even better. Um, <laughs> that's a cool thing. So you can do that, and you're kind of you're kind of good to go. Another thing, uh, BC brush curve tube, and then go in here and say as line on your stroke. So if we do as line. I guess we can turn on snap too. Now you can just go from like you know this tooth here to this tooth here, and that'll give you. This, you can say tap off, say split mass points, go through here, and you can say smooth it out. I wish the Death Star needed spit so I could add this to my final product. That's okay. And then, too, it's, you know, it's going to kind of, if it just, if it's had its mouth, the longer it's had its mouth open, if it just opened its mouth and it's, the spit's going from there, okay. But if it's sitting there screaming at you, eventually this is going to go, you know, so keep that in mind. And then uh, again, even if you wanted to, you know, go back into 
and you want to put two together, so curve two, and it's like, okay, this one's actually going to have a little strand from here to here. Let's go ahead and make our brush size smaller. And these two I'll end up wanting to put together eventually, but for now I'm just going to kind of mush them. And then thin this middle part out. You can always inflate the ends out too if you want. But now we can do this. Let's go ahead and crank up that resolution. We'll DynaMesh this result, and then we'll Ziri Mesh that. So that'll give us, again, decent geometry. Stick them together, and then we can hit D for dynamic. And now we've got these spit lines. Again, maybe we can, if it's yelling at us, it's going to be like pushing breath through. And then uh, again, PPR render those. <laughs> yeah, we could, uh, yeah, I'll put that in front of him. Put the, put the, he's going to chomp on a number two pencil. All righty. Um, gosh, I wonder if I could. So uh, we can also clean out our scene here. So for example, we can say delete all on this one. Skinsy sphere. Maybe I'll keep that around just in case I need it for whatever screenshots I want to make. We've got this one here. We got our render. We have our, oh yeah, I was going to go back in here. Let's open up that uh, pencil here. And then I'm going to use this Nick collection. Let's play around with this. It'll be fun. Let's do analog effects. Go ahead and click this. It'll open it up. And, uh, oh, did I not buy it yet? I guess I'm still on try. Well, we'll keep trialing it out. Unless I need to go through my emails and see if I, I could have sworn I bought it, but maybe not. There we go. So we'll do a little bit of a little filtering here. Uh, let's look good. Classic camera. It's a number two pencil. It's old school. So we can again, boy, is there, are these that big? I didn't realize these were this big. Well, we may do. I need to go that crazy. Image size. That's not that big. Hmm. Uh, there's that. There's analog effects and then color effects. And there's a bunch of other stuff in there too, but those are the ones I play around with the most. Yeah, he was. Uh, he's got a little bit of a. This is a. As I, if you want to make this thing, it's on my uh, Gumroad Cube brush page creature production he's it's an old one though it's it's fairly old i don't know that would be all that relevant anymore i guess the the regular techniques don't really change that much but yeah i get a little bit of a different look here focus in and you got some other good stuff up here so you can um where is that like the shape and the filter and you can do oh what's it called let's hit okay you can do um vignettes and stuff like this so just to make stuff pop but i want to do analog effects it just seems to be a little bit slow wait for it yeah, maybe I'll skip this one then. Anyways, maybe it's because I'm streaming. Uh, so again, you have uh, the vignette down here. You can control the amount of the vignette. You can do negative or uh, just like a little fade at the side. You can change from circle to more rectangle. You can change the size um, pretty quickly. Uh, dirt and scratches you can kind of mess around with here. Give you some cool looks. I was looking for something that just pops a little bit more. I wish I would have spent more time on that wood. It's kind of bugging me. Yeah, you can always clean it up in the post, I suppose. But um, yeah, number two pencil. Boom. There we go. Um, I'm not sure. Go. You know what? Actually, we should. We should save this as... Pencil. And in fact, this is something I didn't cover but if I go in here to file open, I 
when we did the ZBrush core and I added fur to it. Go ahead and start closing some of these windows down. Wait for this to open up. This is the setup for that. And that was just fiber mesh fur. Basically just populate fiber mesh, uh, go through and paint it, and then go through and groom uh, that. So this is the, again, this is all just fiber mesh. And you know what might be easier? This is a, this is a 40 million polygon plus thing. So let's go ahead and just do a little region render. And that'll get you that little fur look from fiber mesh in there. And use alpha brushes for stitching seams. I know you need very high poly count, but can you use zero mesh project to reduce poly count but keep the seams stitches? I feel like my models always stay in the millions. Um, yeah, and it, especially when it comes to stitches and details and stuff. Um, let's go ahead and shut this down. What I tend to do, again, if I if my if if this thing is you know however many polygons it is, and I'm okay, I want to put some stitches on here. Number one, it's pretty. It's easy, but it's destructive to go through and do, well, where do we find those things, stitches? To go through and do something like, because now what I have to do is I have to keep track of, oh, I need this to be a different material and I need this to be a different material. Well, I can turn on RGB and I can do like a material mask for this, you know, but then again, it's like, oh, it's kind of faded. It just, it's kind of more trouble than it's worth. However, um, instead of doing that, actually, shoot, I got this. So speaking of this, let me see. Do, am I even able to find this on their channel? Somewhere on their channel is, yay, creating stitches along a curve. So something like this, GBrush top tips, 13 minutes of me going through and explaining, you know, putting these in, creating your own custom stitches and then um, you know dialing those in. That's just a little bit more, it's less destructive and you have more access to the stitches. And here's the other thing too, if your stitches aren't gonna change your silhouette, speaking of substance, actually, let's do that um, real quick. Hold on, how much time, I got a couple minutes left. I'm going to do stitches as a kind of a sculpt. However, oh, come on. Every single time. I swear to God. Error contacting our server. Um, come on, man. This stuff gets re-upped every month. Why do I have to fight it? Um, Next, back, uh, license file, next, select, downloads. Yeah, okay, I have, to, I have to manually go in and get a new license file because I can't log into their damn thing. But essentially, again, if you're gonna use this type of methodology, you can throw it right into Substance Painter or Marmoset and you can go through and you can do um, just do it in a in the texture because again, it's not going to break the silhouette. It's going to end up being a normal map, uh, so that way you have complete control over the mask. You have complete, you have its slider depth. So if you want to go through and make it, you know, punch it in, punch it out, or more or less, uh, change the color, change the material properties, uh, and you don't have to worry about like bumping this up to 20 million to get the resolution that you want. You know, if it's on a if it's on something cheap or something with subdivision, uh, you can just you know do it in the texture. But unfortunately, I can't show you that because I need to go to get a new license file or something. Uh, how'd you make the armor plates for the robot with the tubes you showed before? Um, a couple different methods. Uh, let me see if I got something in here. So if I wanted to do, probably if I'm, if I'm just guessing, I may have done something like, you know, I'm gonna do a quick uh, merge visible append and I'm just gonna do like an armor pass on this guy. So I'm gonna go down here to this. And I'm gonna say, you know what, let's go ahead and just dynamesh this result here. So here's my, let's also turn on Sculptures Pro so we can get rid of some of this in here. So this is just gonna be my rough sculpt on here. I'm in fact, I'm gonna deflate this like negative two. So now if I wanna go through here and kind of put on some armor and go through here and I'd be like, oh, what's this armor gonna look like? 
you know, and I can kind of start determining where his armor is going to be, what it's going to look like. It's going to give him a turtle, Mr. Rogers turtleneck. Let's do a quick mirror, mirror, and well, turn on X symmetry, and then go back in here with our H polish. This will be like the the shell of the armor. Go in here with Damien Standard. Punch this in and hold down Alt and punch this out. Clay brush here. So again, I'm just kind of sculpting where I want my armor to be. And since I'm doing armor, I can go ahead and turn off the trim dynamic square alpha stuff. So here, again, just going through and just determining really quickly where I want these armor bounds to be. And then at this point, I can use Ziri Mesh or I can use just Topology Brush or Z-Sphere Topology to go through and start. I want this to cut off here. And then I want the you know panel line through here, and then I've got this chunk right in here that I want to deal with maybe. You know, so now if I want to refine this, just go in here. Ooh, mesh projects already selected, huh? Um, let's go in here to mask pin, and I'm going to just pop this off and just continue to refine it. Just makes it a little bit easier to work on this separately. Um, another thing too, because I'm working across axis symmetry, that I might consider is a Control W, isolate this, go ahead and split hidden. Um, I'm going to just work on one side, so I'll get rid of the side here, delete hidden, close holes, W, control tap this, let's pull out a little bit of thickness there, give me a little wiggle room, and then redyna mesh. However, go down here to uh, array mesh, lock position, lock size, reset mirror across the X axis, and now I can work on this side and have it show up. So that way, if I'm going through here and I'm like, let's clean this up a little bit, we'll do clip curve, I can clip through the object and not have it like you know doing that thing where it goes across you know i can have a little more freedom to kind of go through here and clean up as needed without having to worry too much so anyway i'm going through here i'm cleaning up this mesh i can raise up the resolution just a tad and again and then i'm just figuring out base shape you know i'm not worried too much about like oh what kind of alphas and booleans do i want to put in here it's literally just what shape am i looking to make Go through here and push this stuff around a little bit. Smooth, trim dynamic, solo mode. Go in here and a little bit of H polish. You know, whatever that shape you're looking to make is gonna be. And then once you're done with this, again, feel free to like rebuild it uh, really quickly, you know, and that way you have like a sub D mesh you can play around with. Or if this is good enough, you know, just continue to refine this and then you could drop your alphas in here. So if, I'm, if I was going to rebuild this, I would keep the shape simple at first, and then I would put on all these bevels after I sub model it. But if I'm not planning on doing that, let's put them in now. Go through here and... Give this little upturn look here. Or if I want to go through here and be like, you know what, this needs to cut into some other geo down here, or a little latch or something, or I want to put a, a belt across here, that's what topology brush is kind of good for is you can very quickly go through here and just be like let's connect these bad boys oops tap off here why is that so slow let's go ahead and split this off let's turn off dynamesh shift d and then uh, in fact if we want to redo this so z sphere topology or insert mesh would not have to deal with this but you can also go through here and it's like you know what? i just want it to stretch flat from one point to another and then you can go back in insert multiple edge loops and you can dial back in you know, your resolution let's go ahead and uncrease all and then uh, this is a little thick so all you got to do is go back in here q mesh polygroup all you know what maybe it's slow because i had um i have this is an array mesh or something like that so anyway, we get the strap across here. And then if I want this strap to go in here or to loop around, you just dial this in a little bit. And then we can flop this over. Let's hold down Alt and then Q Mesh Polygroup. I'll hold down Control and we'll pop up a little section here. So we can go through and we can say Delete here and here. Oops. And then Bridge. Two holes. Loop this around. And you know what? Let's make it a little easier on ourselves. Let's hold down Control Shift. Let's grab all these middle ones here. Auto groups. And then oops, invert this. Control W. So now we can do um, crease PG dynamic and have this. So let's say crease level of two. 
Let's do so ditto three, and then detail these things out however you need to. But or if you want to keep this part pointy, you go through here and you can say crease edge here, here. Keep that part loopy. And if you want to push this in a little bit, uh, W control drag around here, maybe. Kind of. Or you can literally just go in here to move brush uh, or move topological. I usually just drop down here real quick to auto masking. Turn on topological, crank that range down. Let's go through here and punch this in. BI brush insert clothing. M snap. We don't need the whole assembly. We just need the top. And then say control. Make those both the same size. Go back to our select rectangle here. Split those off. Huh. Something weird was going on there. Go ahead and drop those in just a little bit more. Now, since you've done this, this might need some actual geometry so you can sell it a little bit more. That's where I might go in here to insert single edge loop and get some slightly nicer divisions in here. So when you hit D, you can go ahead and say, you know what, let's apply those subdivisions. And then now you can kind of sell it a little bit better with, you know, looking like it's actually a piece of leather or something like that. All right, we hit eight o'clock. How about that? Um, uh, you know what? It's probably just me. It's probably like if I go here to array mesh, I always work on the positive x that positive x axis. If I was smarter, I would just work on the negative x, so that all I have to do is just do mirror and weld, and it'll automatically populate on the side that I want. You know, if I'm modifying this side and I forget, I can just do mirror and weld, and it'll just do it. I just, for some reason, 15 years worth of working in the positive x axis has ruined me. So. Yeah, yeah, mirror, mirror and weld, geometry modified, topology, delete hidden. Those are both going on my tombstone. Yes. Uh, trim and clip some other make cuts cleaner. Cool. All righty. Well, right on. Cool. All righty. Thanks, everybody. I'm a head out. Uh, like I said before, I'll be streaming Thursday on my channel here. Um, I mean, it'll be here. It'll be on Twitch as well. Path Mike, what is it? Path Mike Twitch. TV Path Mike. Yeah. So Twitch, YouTube, Thursday, we'll hit it back up. We'll maybe do some other stuff. But in the meantime, cool. Thanks, everybody. Right on. Oh, yeah. And Space Fighter. We'll see how far we can get with that or um, if I even remember. But cool. Excellent. Thanks, everybody. I will see you in a couple days.